Hey everybody, Keith Dotson here, and in this video, Tina and I are bringing you along on our visit to Crystal Bridges Museum of Art in Bentonville, Arkansas, believe it or not. I hope if you're new to my channel that you're realizing by now that I like to mix up the subject matter quite a bit. I'm interested in a lot of things, and they all creep into the videos at some point or another. If you've ever heard of Bentonville, it's probably because it's the home and headquarters location for Walmart. And from what I understand, Walmart money helped build this beautiful place. Bentonville is in the northwest corner of Arkansas, very near the Missouri state line. It's kind of far from anywhere, but this museum makes the trip worthwhile. There's also some really beautiful countryside here as well, and for those who are here for my abandoned places photography content, never fear, I have plenty of those videos coming from this trip. I want to encourage you to stick around for this video because we will see some great art, and we'll also go outside to walk the absolutely wonderful grounds. We're starting in an exhibition of portraits, including some quite well-known to anyone who went to school in America. This is a very famous Gilbert Stewart portrait of GW. And there's the Broadway star himself, Alexander Hamilton, looking dapper in this 1792 painting by John Trumbull. He doesn't look in the mood for a song, so we'll move along. This is a portrait by Robert Enri spelled H-E-N-R-I, who also wrote uh, a book called The Art Spirit in 1923. I read that early in my art career, and it's very inspirational. It's now in the public domain, so I'll include a link to a place where you can read it for free. Here's the copy I've had since art school. He was also a part of a generation that saw value in American art, at a time when the great art center of the world was still in France. Since this is a photography channel, we will be sure to look at a little bit of photography at the museum, but admittedly, the museum is not super deep in their photography holdings. There are a lot of wonderful landscape paintings here as well, and we'll see what we can learn from those. If you're a landscape photographer, the great masters of landscape painting can teach you a lot about light and composition. Okay, here's one of those classic landscapes. Sierra Nevada Morning, painted in 1870 by Albert Bierstadt, a German artist who painted in the American West. Whether you like this style of art or not, you have to admit that Bierstadt had a great command of light and composition. He knew how to direct the viewer's eye using line and chiaroscuro. I'll also include a link to the high-resolution JPEG in the show notes and on my blog. This is by James McNeil Whistler, a lesson in color and minimalism and look at that composition and the mood.
This large wall installation appeals to me because it looks like parts of an abandoned house. But it's not. The artist manipulated these materials to look like this. That's a Rothko. That's a restaurant over there. Tina and I had lunch there, but more on that later. And here's another more expressive way to represent the landscape. Does this style apply at all to a photographer's craft? Okay, y'all, now we'll see some photographs, starting with these large format Polaroids by David Leventhal. By the way, this is a Barbie-themed exhibit. It's a black and white photograph taken in New York City by Bruce Davidson. Lots of landscapes on various media here, mixed in with the photography. That's a large Richard Mizrak print. I watched a great documentary about him the other day. Georgia O'Keeffe. Another Bruce Davidson. Jason Vaughn from Wisconsin. I did my best to get a reflection-free clip of this, but it was really difficult. Let's take another look at the Mizrak. It's called Wall Tierra del Sol Road. And it's really nice. I'm trying to see the texture of the paper, I can't tell what it is, 
Several of these prints are pigment prints. Pigment prints are fully accepted in museums now. At this point, we decided to grab some lunch at 11. That's the on-site museum restaurant, and it was pretty good. Tina waited patiently for me to document the food. That's the museum restaurant version of pulled pork. The landscape is pictured beautifully in large windows at various places inside the building. But we wanted to go outside and see the grounds. There's a butterfly that keeps trying to land on my head. Okay, we went back inside for one final exhibition. It's called Exquisite Creatures by Christopher Marley. Everything you'll see here was once a living creature. I know, I know, me too. I was kind of creeped out by the thought of all the dead critters, but he claims to collect them ethically after they've already died from other causes. I tried not to think too much about it, but the fantastical displays he created are mind-boggling, I must admit. Just the matte design alone in this blows my mind.
Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this visit to Crystal Bridges. Thanks for watching. To see my own very minor contribution to the art world, my black and white photographs, be sure to visit my website at keithdotson.com.